Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, as everyone hops on. We're excited to have this conversation. In fact, M Matt and Mike and myself, we've kind of been chatting about this for the last 20 minutes, and and there's some there's uh, there's some really cool data here, and um, I think it's it's going to be really valuable for for fixed ops and for for dealer managers um, as we take a look at some of the ways that we can, uh, of course. Um, generate revenue today but there's some really cool conversations going about what this means for tomorrow um, um, once you know once COVID I'm, I'm an eternal optimist right once COVID kind of uh, uh, goes the way of the dodo so um, thank you for joining us everyone uh, my name is Bart Wilson I'll be kind of moderating this we're going to have some poll questions we're going to have some cool things that we're going to do throughout this so um, you might hear from me we also have Mike and we have Matt. So Matt Carruthers, Mike Rich, we appreciate them joining us. They're going to be doing the heavy lifting for this, um, and it's going to be a great discussion. So before we get started, just a couple of things that I would like to make a note of. Um, we're using GoToWebinar for this. So on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a little slide-out, slide-in um, control panel. And there are a couple of things you're going to want to make mention of. There is a handout. There's an ebook that we provided or that Revolution Parts has provided us that you can access and kind of give you a little bit more context and, and uh, based on this discussion. In addition, there is a drop down for questions. We want to get to as many questions as we can. We built in a bunch of time for that. So if you have questions about, you know, uh, in the weeds questions about, about how to do things or maybe, you know, uh, 15,000 foot view questions about, about overall strategy, fire away. We'd love to have them. Um, the other thing I wanted to make mention is anybody who registered for this webinar, we know you're busy, you got, you know, you got customers coming in the door and, and things are happening. So um, as they as they're talking, we're going to send out a recording to everyone um, that registered. So if you missed a, a piece of this, you can go back and review it and, and, and you know, you'll get that insight as well. Uh, we'll also post it on the community so we can get some good discussions going there. So without further ado, I'm going to stop. Uh, Mike, why don't why don't you kick us off? Introduce yourself, and and then let's just jump in and learn about uh, some of these trends to grow amid and post COVID. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. I'm Mike Rich. I'm a director of marketing at Revolution Parts. I've been with the company for just a few months now, but I've been learning a lot of really exciting stuff about uh, the automotive industry. I'm a huge car fanatic. I have a ton of classic cars at my house. I work on them every weekend, uh, but Revolution Parts is really an exciting company. We have an exciting platform. Uh, it enables dealers to quickly and easily uh, optimize their parts business so they can not only sell more parts online into new markets, but improve their existing operations for local customers. Uh, with me, like Bart said, we have Matt. He's uh, one of our sales leaders. Uh, Matt, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and the company as well. Yeah, good afternoon all. My name is Matt. I'm the sales manager here at Revolution Parts. Been here for um, a little over 16, 17 months. Uh, in that time, really been able to see, um, you know, this, this company grow and, and, and change how it affects dealerships and being able to talk to dealers firsthand and see that impact. Uh, like Mike said, whether it's locally, whether it's the national level or using third party channels and partners, uh, been able to see a lot of dealerships change the way their business operates. Um, and get themselves back in front of customers that they may not be able to be in front of now uh, or reach a whole customer base that, you know, due to their location, they would otherwise not be able to reach. So excited to be here. Back to you, Mike. Hey, thanks, Matt. So, yeah, as uh, Bart was referencing uh, during the presentation today, uh, what we're going to do is we're really going to dig into the impact uh, that COVID has had on the automotive dealership. And we're gonna look at some areas of potential opportunity for you guys. Uh, we're gonna go through and look at how it's impacted car sales. We're gonna look at the impact on the service industry, uh, impacts on parts and accessories. We'll, we'll do a little Q and A at the end. Uh, really our hope is just to educate and you know have you guys walk away with some potential ways to improve profitability in your dealership. I think Bart, you had a poll question you wanted to put up to the audience. Yeah, yeah so so I, I love this question. Um, so let me let me flip it up here. Um, okay, so right off the bat, let's just get into this. Um, do you currently have a digital retailing, an omni-channel, um, 
e-commerce solution for uh, vehicles. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and take a few minutes and uh, we'll get some people voting on this. Does your dealership currently offer a digital retailing solution uh, for customers? Okay, let's give it I give it a few more minutes. We've still got some people that, that haven't chimed in. Um, just go ahead and, and click the button and and we'll move on. Okay, so so and, and the reason I like this this question, Mike, is um, you know we've we there are a lot of dealerships that when COVID hit they they went out and and they found a way to to sell vehicles because of shelter in place and things like that. They really didn't have that solution and and um, you know they really focused a lot on the variable the variable side of the house. So I'm going to close the poll. Uh, and here are the results. It looks like uh, two thirds of the people that voted um, said that yeah, uh, we've got a, a technology in place to help us uh, mer merchandise and move our vehicles. Um, Thirty-three percent are still still haven't done that yet. So um, yeah, so it's a it's a pretty good pretty good sample size, pretty good mix. Yeah, no, that's pretty exciting. I know a lot of businesses have had to like shift quickly because of the COVID and change their model or their work structures. And it's just very encouraging to see, you know, so many people being able to move so quickly into a, a new position that they may not have had in the past. Uh, what, what I want to talk about first is very related to what you just showed. And it's just kind of car sales and some of the trends uh, we've seen in the industry around car sales during the COVID period. So uh, all this data is from Auto News. They were kind enough to provide it to us. Uh, what we saw, though, in the second quarter of uh, 2020 was an average, uh, you know, decline in new car sales by about 34.3%. Uh, some brands were as low as 26%. Some, you know, got up to as high as 39%. It really shifted the way a lot of dealers did business also with new cars, as you referenced, Bart. A lot of guys kind of shifting to that online sales or you know touch free sales type thing uh and it's really common i mean when we're in an economic uh, crisis uh, anyone that's been around for probably at least 10 years remembers the you know the last kind of crisis we had related to the real estate market uh and, and there was a crunch there so anytime there's a crunch car sales seems to take a dip uh but what's kind of unique uh, about this, you know, specific economic crisis or the pandemic is not the impact it's had on uh, new car sales, but actually uh, the impact that it's had on the service lane. So we pulled some data as well uh, on collision uh, maintenance repair. And typically, you know, what you expect to see in a recession is people want to stay in their cars longer. They become very more focused on uh, the service, the repair, uh, what it takes to get their car back on the road. Uh, you do usually don't see a dip in collision because people are not going to stop driving their cars. Uh, they still are driving and they're out and about doing their normal daily activity. Uh, that's where it's different with COVID. So uh, we've seen, you know, uh, dips in collision repair and maintenance uh, across dealerships, according to data from Auto News. And what we really relate that to is, is like a, the pandemic piece of it versus just the recession we had in 08. So the pandemic introduced, you know, these concepts of uh, social distancing, uh, fear of contracting the virus, and then prioritizing, you know, uh, the essential repair over maintenance and, and really keeping people just indoors, keeping cars off the road. I know I I still drive into the office one or two days a week and my commute is as light as it's ever been in my life. There's no one on the road ever. <laughs> so it, just the opportunity, you know, for collision is down. Uh, the service is down, you know, anywhere from 50 to 30 percent, depending on which month you look at. And, and it's really a change. Um, you know, we have an interesting story. We have a customer at the beginning of uh, COVID who called in. Uh, we had a few customers like this guy. I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, the dealership was looking to uh, 
you know, cut some money, you know, cut back. They were seeing revenue dry up from new car sales. They were seeing, you know, maintenance go down. Collision's kind of been a little bit on the downswing too. That's also related to a lot of the new car technology that prevents collisions. Uh, less traffic has just further expounded that decline. But um, yeah, he was there. The dealer was looking to cut back, you know, save money, you know, tighten their belt, so to speak. So uh, they were looking at ending their partnership with Revolution Parts, and they were looking at just discontinuing, you know, the staffing they needed to sell parts online, to ship parts that they sold online. So uh, they were looking at actually getting rid of this guy's job and also, you know, terminating the program. Uh, luckily, we have some amazing uh, customer service reps here, and uh, our customer service or account rep was able to really talk through the gentleman, you know, about, you know, what we were starting to see in parts. And he was able to take that data uh, to his general manager and make a case for keeping the program in place. And uh, luckily, you know, uh, the general manager agreed and, you know, said, hey, we are going to keep the parts program in place. Uh, I have confidence in the program. Uh, that guy was able to keep his job. A couple of other people in the dealership were able to keep the job as a result because uh, parts actually didn't decline. We saw some strong numbers, and I'll get to those shortly. Uh, I, I just want to kick it over to Matt really quick because Matt also, uh, he talks to tons of dealers every day, and I'm sure he has some great insight into like the stories that he's heard from dealerships regarding you know staffing and impacts of covid uh, so, Matt, if you have some stories you'd like to share, go for it. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, validate what you were saying, you know, in terms of, you know, dealerships going into uh, cost-cutting mode because they didn't have other, uh, you know, avenues that they could see at the time. You know, I've I've talked to hundreds of dealerships since this all started, and basically almost every single one of them ended up doing a lot of cost-cutting whether it was in the variable offside or especially the fixed offside, talking to, to parts managers and parts leaders where some of their staffing, you know, levels were cut, you know, at times up to 80% and, you know, trying to figure out how are we going to survive since the services and what can we do to, to grow. And we've seen this rise in the, the DIY, you know, kind of customer where, like you said, they're no longer coming to the dealership for service. They want to be able to do it from home if they can. The guys that, you know, didn't have the time to do their own work on cars before uh, now are either working from home or not working as, as often. So, you know, it's just thing on that end. Um, but talking to a lot of these guys and the ones that we've been able to get on board, uh, we've been able to, to help in many ways uh, fill the, the, the gap on the staffing side in terms of, um, you know, time and energy and effort in the day of the life of the parts guy, um, making them more efficient in their job, um, taking a lot of those phone calls and moving them to a place where they could be easily dealt with online, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's been a massive effect in uh, the, the staffing levels, and uh, we've been able to help with a lot of that. Um, one of the, the stories that, that comes to mind is a dealership that had a, a big situation with wholesale, a lot of drivers, and across the board, you know, from my conversations, the driver was the, the first guy that, that got let go across the board. You know, we're, we're putting to give the cost for, for the driver's salary, his, the vehicle that he's driving, insurance you know, those costs ramping up and up. And guys that had four or five drivers, maybe down to one driver, if, if keeping one at all, and the parts manager, whoever else is still in the parts counter, you know, having to take over those duties, we've been help, able to help them um, really increase what they've been able to do, uh, increase their customer effectiveness, their the reviews from the customers, and also make their business grow that way as well. Uh, so I'm excited to talk more about that kind of stuff. Uh, right back to you, Mike. Hey, thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, and all this stuff Matt alluded to is really the, the growth in parts we've seen. So, uh, Bart, if you want to advance the slide, what we've actually seen since COVID is we've seen a 48% increase in part sales. So that's what this chart is showing is uh, average daily part stores across the uh, almost 1,000, I think 500 dealerships that are currently using our platform. So what's interesting is... Uh, Sales, like the chart, like if you look at it, where it, the increase comes, that 40% increase, 40 to 50% increase, it's almost a mirror image. The black line's 2019, the red line's 2020. 
So it's like almost we cut that black line and we just increased it and stuck it on top. You still see all the same dips and everything you would expect to see uh, from the seasonality. It's just that there's a huge amount of volume of people buying parts. Uh, number wise, like last year through July, we did 27.9 million across all of our dealers. Uh, this year, we've done 41.6 million. Uh, we only have 5% of the dealers online selling. Uh, but it's really like a predictable uh, stream of revenue that's growing. Uh, prior to COVID uh, hitting uh, our busiest day of the year, like historic, like if you went back in our history and looked at the 10 top days or 10 top sales days for our dealers, uh, nine of the 10 were for this thing called Cyber Monday. I don't know how many of you guys know what Cyber Monday is, but it's apparently some big shopping day where a bunch of people go online and spend a bunch of money. But uh, yeah, since COVID, uh, of those days, nine of our top selling days are now in the COVID period. And this has been in a very short time that those you know top selling days have been supplanted. Uh, typically what we see on a Cyber Monday is you know a minimum usually of like a 50% increase in sales that day. So we're already up overall, like almost 50% uh, year over year, every day this year. So on Cyber Monday this year, we're predicting uh, like record sales uh, on our platform, like, like groundbreaking numbers that we haven't seen before. And this isn't just a trend in automotive e-commerce. Like if you look at e-commerce platforms across the board, uh, like a popular platform is uh, Magento. Like they released a report recently and they they had seen like a 40% uptick in customers using their platform uh, to drive transactions. Uh, you follow the stock market, any company that's in tech or e-commerce or selling stuff online, uh, they're up. And, you know, it's really, you know, a testament to companies being able to migrate a lot of this stuff online quickly and shift some of their business. But e even before COVID, like it's been growing, like online part sales has been a growing revenue stream. Uh, traditionally, it's been dominated by, you know, the aftermarket and dealers haven't had a huge piece of that pie. Uh, they've been relegated to maybe putting a form on their website, like a parts request form. Uh, and then someone would fill that out and then a dealer would call them back and get to them and sell them apart that way. But really the, you know, the shift is, is, you know, providing higher quality parts, you know, to the consumer and giving them an experience on your website and in other markets where, you know, they can buy parts and you can take advantage of this growing revenue stream. Uh, hey Mike, sorry, sorry, Mike, Matt, I think it's really, this is really fascinating and it seems like a lot of this is, is just because people don't want to leave their houses. And I think if you think of, of the of the um, of the uh, demographic of the people who typically do this kind of work, my, my, I guess my fear if I was in the parts department would be, well, I'm just going to cannibalize my revenue, right? All the people that normally come in are are buying online, and and I think you know maybe COVID's representing part of that's true. But can you kind of talk into who's who's do who who are who are these people that are going online and, and buying these parts and accessories? Yeah, I mean, it's really kind of a shift overall. Like if you take COVID out of it, uh, so it's the DIY guy mostly, right? Or it's the it's the mechanic, you know, who has a small organization, a small shop. Uh, but it, it's really a lot. Of, and I'll let you speak to this too, Matt. Like it's the DIY guy. Uh, it's the car guy, you know, someone who wants to buy parts. And, you know, you know I've been working on cars for a long time myself. And I used to... I used to call the dealer and say, hey, I'm looking for this part. Or I used to go down to the parts store, like physically walk in uh, and be like, hey, I need X part or Y part. Or I look at the catalog. And that's just not the way that you shop for parts anymore. I mean, some people still do. There's still that slice that are always, you know, going to do it the old school way. But more and more, it's convenient, you know, to go online and be able to, you know, search 
for parts that you want and see their avail availability and look at the schematics online yourself and not rely on the guy behind the parts counter uh, to know what parts you you know you need and like what other parts you need to get the job done so like the software does that like if you go online and you're buying a part if you're getting a water pump it's going to suggest that you get the water pump gasket kit you know that goes along with it uh you know maybe the timing chain if it's uh related to like a dual overhead cam motor so you need to get the timing chain set to while you're doing the water pump so it's going to make that suggestion so it's really optimizing you know the purchase experience uh for the consumer and a lot of people that you know are reliant on part sales you know that have you know maybe they have that wholesale piece figured out but they're not they don't for a consumer they're just you know relying on that form or people coming in that's it's an area before covid that was already starting you know to dry up a little bit and can, is this is just further you know accelerated you know the experience of people going online and once you get a taste and you get used to that shopping online i mean you've seen it countless places countless retail organizations uh walmart for example uh is an organization that for the longest time really didn't put a lot of focus on online shopping you know they have these huge stores and storefronts and amazon slowly by slowly you know started chipping away and building this online shopping empire uh, that's a huge business model now and you know walmart woke up and now they offer a, a online shopping experience very similar to amazon uh other retailers you know have not pivoted quick enough uh you know you could look at um trying to think of a good example here i was going to go to blockbuster but i don't know how great of an example that is you know of like the shift to online like they relied on people to come in and you know just foot traffic to to do business and they never well, they shifted online really late but it was too late and you know didn't work for them uh on like the like the retail side like like starbucks for example think about where they would be if they didn't have drive throughs right now or a lot of restaurants that didn't have drive throughs uh are just ordering for example like food ordering like five years ago when you wanted a pizza uh would you call and order a pizza you know from domino's uh today are you going to call or are you going to go online and order the pizza and be able to track it on the app and see where it's at so i mean just like as a society and the way business is done uh i say traditionally like automotive from the parts perspective may be a little bit behind but it's it's trending that way some organizations and industries they're much further ahead but it's the way of the future and it provides a lot of value add to both the consumer and the business and we'll talk a little bit about that value add uh, matt i think i cut you off what did you have to add yeah, no, just a couple of things. Like earlier, you were talking about trends and DIYers, and that's a big part of it. But even before that, you know, I remember talking to dealerships, you know, before this all got started. And like like you mentioned, uh, retail itself is moving more and more towards an e-commerce kind of thing because that's what's better for the customer. You know, customer service and the customer experience is very different now than it was five, ten years ago. You know, you have a dealership and a parts department that was used to people walking in you know, talking to the staff, asking questions, calling on the phone. Um, but today's customers, you know, I used to work with Google before I came to Revolution Parts, and what they discovered is, you know, 90% of people when they're looking to make a retail purchase, whether or not they go into a store after all and purchase it, they're always going to start their search online. And that number has even continued to grow. So, you know, beforehand it was, you know, the guys would come in, talk to the guy they knew in the parts department, but now customers want to be their own expert. They want it faster, they want it more efficiently, they want to be able to make themselves an expert without having to talk to somebody, without having to do anything to disrupt their flow or their daily lives. So, you know, going online now, you know, you mentioned that parts order form that's been around for, at dealerships for 10 to 15 years. That's not a valid customer experience now. You know, they still have to integrate with the dealership in some way or wait for someone to call them and there's a delay uh, from them getting online to maybe getting the satisfaction of finding what they're looking for. So they're looking for that now, that quick, everyone wants it faster, everyone wants to be able to feel, look and touch at things right now and get that experience, get that shopping experience that they want. 
So we've been able to really revolutionize a lot of that. And as you mentioned, the, the variable offset of the house has been a lot quicker than that, but parts specifically has been way behind the eight ball historically uh, than the rest of the retail world. You know, I mean, Amazon mentioned earlier this year that they're adding 100,000 plus more workers to, to deal with the increase. Uh, lots of companies have been moving to almost exclusively online to be able to survive and grow. Uh, and yet this industry has been kind of charging along for a long time the same way, but it's not good, not good enough. And the customers that were there in front of you there are now online. Whether they're a DIYer or not, they want to be able to shop, they want to be able to make themselves an expert and get, get have an option to, to buy those parts now to make things convenient. Because convenience is king these days. And we're able to help dealerships uh, deal with that, whether it's locally or, or nationally online. Hey, yeah. hey Matt, I, I really, I, I like this concept that you're mentioning of the DIYer because when I think of a profile of a DIYer, I'm thinking of if they're 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 going they're going to go to you know insert your your national chain here AutoZone, you know uh, Napa right and 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 you're you're able to provide the similar experience to those two. I think that's I think it's that's an important thing to to note right right now. Obviously, COVID is bringing this big spike up, but at the end of the day, you know dealers can go and get some of that parts business back from from these national chains because they have the the OEM quality part they have the the warranty and everything like that and and so it, you're talking about net new business you're not talking about cannibalizing people who were who would come and get their work done necessarily at the service department right and it's covid right if covid wasn't in the mix right i mean it's just to, to speak directly to your point you know we know that the the aftermarket side of things is like a 40 billion dollar business right now and historically the oem side of it hasn't been able to do as much with that or get involved because you have to go to the dealership directly to deal with that. Now we're making an opportunity for dealerships to get after some uh, of that side of the business that they were out of before. And we're starting to see uh, bigger and bigger growth in the OEM side online specifically because of that. Now we're giving OEMs the tools to, to make an impact and really kind of take a stand and maybe conquer some, some ground and some new territory in that particular side of the market. Yeah, and before like Matt really brought this up, like the point of like a lot of purchases starting on with an online search, like when dealers parts are not categorized or cataloged online and someone's searching, they just don't find them. Of course they find the AutoZone, the Checker, O'Reilly or whatever, you know, aftermarket parts supplier there is. But when your parts are cataloged, they can find your parts. And a lot of guys that work on their own cars, you know are very passionate and have a, you know, a very, you know, intimate relationship and a love of their cars. And they want to put, you know, the best quality parts on there because no one wants to have to fix it again when that, you know, $25 or hundred dollar alternator breaks because it only had a one year warranty or whatever it was. So I mean, there's a, there's a huge opportunity and it's just not an area that, you know, a lot of dealers have focused on uh, historically. Uh, we have seen great inroads. Uh, we were recently named by Inc. actually for the fourth year in a row as one of the fastest growing companies uh, in the U.S. And that's because, you know, more and more dealers are starting to get serious about taking on the, you know, these aftermarket and taking back some of that aftermarket uh, revenue. It's a huge, uh, huge opportunity right now. And uh, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier about like one of the natural tendencies that, you know, dealers and people have in general is just a natural tendency. Like when stuff gets tight is to like retract and to not spend more money to like try to tighten the belt. Uh, the rich get richer in times of economic downturn. So those that are willing to be bold and make investments in a downtime are those that tend to get the greatest reward at the end. It's usually cheaper to invest in the downtime. Like in this particular scenario, the demand's greater. Uh, what we're seeing like in, from an advertising standpoint, we're seeing uh, searches for parts up, we're seeing the cost of advertising low, we're seeing like our return on ad investment because we do marketing services too is up like 10 to one to 12 to one when historically it's like a like I think in the five to six to one range, like we're doubling like the ROI on a lot of our ad spend right now. Like there's like a lot of really exciting growth that's going right now in parts and marketing parts 
and selling parts to consumers. Uh, and it's like really, it's an amazing time to get in. And it's really for dealers, like if you have a lot of time freed up right now because it's not as busy in car sales, it's not as busy in service, uh, and you have that time and you have that money you could shift to make an investment, it's a really great investment that's recession proof and pandemic proof that's going to continue to pay off and help, you know, get dealers towards that, you know, that absorption rate that they want to get to that hundred percent absorption rate. It's just another lever you can pull to, to move towards that goal. Um, Mike, the, Mike, Mike, if I can interrupt for just a second here, just to tie in with what you were saying with that, the other side of things is uh, cleaning up of the obsolescence and aged uh, parts that we've been seeing uh, a lot since this has happened. Uh, I just want to share a quick story. There was a dealer that uh, had held off on signing with us at the end of the year and reconnected with me uh, since COVID had started. And he had a massive, massive, uh, you know, amount of obsolescence. I believe his inventory was something like north of 30% of it was 12 months or older uh, that had been sitting there. And, you know, he had been selling it off a lot. You know, a lot of dealerships, they'll, they'll find a partner to sell it for 40 or 50 cents on the dollar. And he had this one particular sister store, a state over that would consistently buy the stuff. And he was about to sell another 20 grand worth of that stuff for about 10 grand to this guy. And he was wondering why this particular guy kept buying their obsolescence and kept buying it, especially during COVID and everything happened. And when I looked, I found out that that sister store was one of our customers and they were doing that consistently and selling north of six figures a month just on eBay alone by buying obsolescence from other sister stores and, and at 40 or 50 cents on the dollar and being able to sell that because we make it easier for dealers to move that age stuff to clean up their back end and really keep their cost and efficiencies up. Uh, that way as well. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, you go ahead and go to the next slide, Bart. Okay, perfect. And this, uh, well, I'll be really quick here. And we've been talking about this over the past, you know, 30 minutes. This is just the change in the market and the uh, the shift to online. Uh, you saw on the previous slide just the overall increase. This is just talking about. Uh, the increase we've seen like at the store level, so like the average uh, sales by store. So our average store has gone from basically like 40 to almost $60,000. So it's, we don't have a lot more sales because we added a lot more customers. We have a lot more sales because there's a lot more people searching for parts and a lot more people buying parts online right now. Uh, and it's really like an exciting opportunity and exciting time uh, to be in parts and to start moving parts. And it's not just online. Uh, Matt kind of talked about it uh, with the delivery earlier. Like a lot of people have like slowed down their, their delivery drivers or cut delivery. Uh, one of the exciting services we actually introduced uh, during COVID is a local delivery program. Uh, so, what that means, it's really targeted to uh, your local buyers, but they can go online and through your parts store that we build for you or through the parts order form that you use. It's part of the revolution solution and they can order part, the customer can order parts and then they can use our local delivery service. And we send a driver to your shop, to your dealership to pick up the part and take it to the uh, consumer or even if it's a, a repair shop, like other repair shops you do wholesale business with, uh, we can we have that service now where we can come to you, pick up the part, and drop it off to the consumer. So we can do completely touch-free uh, delivery, just like a lot of organizations are doing. So it kind of scratches that itch for the consumer to get the part, you know, as quick as possible. Uh, also, on like that, like the junk parts or the obsolescent parts, like another story. Uh, we had a, a customer. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna call him John. We'll change his name to to protect the the innocent or or the guilty, I guess, in this case. <laughs> what he was, but uh, he uh, he had this big old drawer at his shop, and uh, we had went out one day, and he pulled up and like this huge drawer, like it just kept opening for days. It felt like, and it had a ton of just like obsolescent parts like old like weird like one-off parts that you know most people aren't going to order 
Uh, and what had happened, the story had told us is he had a consumer, you know, call into the shop and, you know, said, hey, I need, you know, this batch of parts. So, you know, John ordered the parts. They came in. Uh, he paid for them. Uh, the consumer never showed up and they, you know, just sat in his desk forever, did nothing with them. Uh, with, you know, the Revolution Solution, what you can do is, in addition to online, we have a parts order form that you can use in your storefront. And if you're talking to someone on the phone, uh, you can just send them a link right then on the spot uh, for them to pay for the part. So they can pay for the part uh, prior to picking it up or prior to you ordering it. And then if you want, you can use the local delivery service and have it sent out to them. So they don't even have to drive over to your shop and get it. It's just, you know, it's really changing the way you do business from a parts perspective and making it a lot more consumer friendly. So, so anything to add or Bart, any questions about that? Uh, so, well, I, I, these points that you've got, I'm sure you're going to get into them. So I'll just wait. Sorry, man. Keep going. I, I've got a million questions and that we've got some starting to come in. So I'm going to let you do your thing and then you, you, you tell me when you're ready and I'll start firing questions. Yeah. And so it's really like about your parts business, just evaluating your parts business model. Like parts is growing right now. It's going to continue to grow. There's a huge opportunity in parts. So just as a dealership, you know, looking at parts as a place of strategic growth. And how do you achieve that strategic growth is you need to, you know, invest online. So you need to go after these additional markets. You need to have a web store. If, if they can't find you, they're not going to buy from you. And the way people search for parts is they search for the parts they want online. They find them. Then they do some price searching sometimes. Sometimes they just call you directly. Sometimes they order online. So you need to invest online. You need to get yourself an online presence. Uh, and you need to have the tools you know, that, that work together. Uh, like one of the nice thing about our tools is they make it really, really simple to sell parts online. Very easy, very quick. Uh, we integrate, and Mullet and Matt talked to a lot of this as well when we get to questions, is like we have integrations with like all the major OEM catalogs. So it's not something where you have to go in and, you know, manually like type, you know, the parts into a catalog like, it's instant integration, you know, with the OEM catalog. So it gets, you know, diagrams, schematics, you know, pricing, all that stuff, like the eBay and Amazon, like we have quick, simple, you know, ways that you can deploy to those marketplaces. Uh, we have best help uh, guides. We have people, human resources to guide you along the way to make you successful. I mean, Revolution Parts, you know, our goal you know, is to make the dealer successful, to drive more revenue for the dealership, uh, to, you know, to take, help them take back the aftermarket and give them the tools they need. We don't want to make more work for you guys, at, for the dealer at the end of the day. We want to just drive more revenue in a more efficient manner. And, and that's really, you know, what, what it all boils down to. I'll let Matt speak a little bit to it as well. Yeah, I mean, the one thing just to that I think separates Revolution Parts from anybody else out there is we're the complete solution expert, right? I mean, guys have been able to do eBay or Amazon before, or they may have a wholesale solution uh, or a local solution and things like that. Uh, but I believe, you know, we're the only company out there that can really give you the maximum amount of tools to reach the, the, the largest amount of potential customers for you, you know, whether it's third party, whether it's on your website, a web store, uh, you know, wholesale, service line help, et cetera. Um, and, you know, at the pricing that we talk about and also the ability to, to make an impact. And, you know, in the short time that we've been doing this as a startup, we've seen massive increases in growth and sales, like uh, over $1.3 billion worth of sales have come through. And we've got a lot of data and tools to help. So when it comes to price matrices, when it comes to, you know, how much you should be charging for this point of this, you know, this starter or this. Uh, rotor on, on each in a different channel, how we can support your wholesale customers, uh, make it easier for your guys to, you know, spend more, more time in their day fulfilling orders versus being stuck on the phones with customers, you know, getting rid of that parts order form that, that nobody likes and, and putting out a, uh, something on your site so you can actually start making sales directly through your website, you know, our in-house marketing support, all of that. 
you know, it's really important for us to be a partner for dealerships to help you guys make more money and see growth in the parts department across the board and really show what fixed ops can do as a revenue driver for dealerships in, in a world where, you know, new cars and service aren't doing what they used to do in historically in the past. Awesome, yeah. let, let me, let's get right, let's cut right to the chase then. Uh, Please feel free to, to so, submit your questions. We'll get to as many of these as we can. Um, the first question I've got uh, comes from somebody who's asking. I think this is probably, I you know, I think you may have heard this question once or twice, guys. Um, what about my margins? Like, like you're telling me I need to invest into a lot, a lot of this. What's it going to do to my margins? And um, you know, how, how do I need to look at that revenue? That's a really good question, Mike. If you mind, I, I can take this one. Go for it. Yeah, um, I think, first of all, there, there needs to be a little bit of shift in mentality. You know, we can help on the local side of things uh, and in different channels to do different things with margin, depending on what, what, what way you're doing at it. You know, well, the way we ha help is we've got the local tool, the, the national web store tool, and then we also do eBay and Amazon. And we can do dynamic pricing things for all different channels to help you make the most of your margin in every scenario, but realizing buying and selling parts online is different than walking through the door, right? Uh, the retail customer that's shopping with you, that's going through the service lane, he's used to, to paying the retail prices and then the margin that's there. We can continue to help that on the local side of things. But for customers that are usually shopping on eBay and Amazon, yeah, there, there's different things with margin. And specifically with channels like eBay and Amazon, a lot of dealers that I've talked to, they've tried those before. And there's been so many different fees and things that get in the way. So by the time they're actually selling something, they may be losing money. Uh, with our tool, we're able to eliminate a lot of those fees, a lot of the time and effort. Uh, you're no longer having to spend hours or hire people to make listings. Um, and we make it less expensive to, to work with a lot of those partners. And like you said, we have price matrices that can give you the best possible opportunity to make margin uh, in all of those cases. Some cases, you, you may have less margin, obviously, than in the retail, but, you know, uh, being used to the 40% in, in, in local margin versus, you know, having the opportunity to still be able to make, you know, 15 to 25% margin on eBay. Uh, really what you got to think about, those are parts of successes that you wouldn't be selling otherwise, right? So there may be some less margin, but you're still having a healthy margin. That can be something that helps you get an increase in your, you know, returns allotment, or you're able to get more of that back in money from your OE. Or, or your purchasing power is better because you're getting more discounts from your OE because you're selling more parts. So it's not just on the margin side of things, but there's a whole other side on the back end of things that you may not be able to access before that we've been able to help our dealerships access those extra bonuses and things through their OEMs as well. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, here's another one. Um, you guys mentioned parts delivery. Um, when, when you have stores that, that that integrate or implement that, who pays for it? Is it, is it a sunk cost that the parts department pays for, or is it something that, that is passed on to customers to have the part delivered? Yeah, it's a it's a combination, right? And depending on the situation, we can set it up as part of the local experience. So, you know, we actually partner with companies such as DoorDash and Postmates to do those deliveries for you. I'm sure everyone's familiar with those for, you know, buying food. Um, if I'm a local customer, say I'm 35 minutes away, I go onto my, you know, dealership's local plug-in, and I want to order a part Saturday, I need it delivered uh, right now, uh, I can actually choose to pay the delivery fee. There's no integra there's no extra integration cost for the dealerships to use that. Uh, it's just the delivery fee for that company. Um, if it's a local guy, like I said, they're doing the order, they can pay that themselves. Uh, some cases, they uh, dealerships will pass that cost along to their wholesalers. Or if they're really wanting to fulfill something for a big customer, they may just pay the, the 8 to $20 or whatever that delivery fee is themselves. And when you think about it and you put the, the, the cost of a driver and the, the, the truck and everything that I mentioned earlier, you know, unless your, your drivers are doing more than 20 deliveries a day already, uh, we're a, a vastly better economic solution for that. I think that's where they were going with that, that question, guys, is I, I think that, that, you know, if you think about going back to what you said earlier, Matt, I think the first people to go uh, when, when this, when this uh, the pandemic hit from a parks department standpoint, were these drivers? And I think that's mm -hmm. the, the I think the idea that they're going for here is can can you 
do you need to bring him back? I mean, I, nobody likes to have these kind of conversations. It kind of sucks to talk about, but do you do you leverage these these uh, drivers as a service to to take to to take the place of them? And, and you know, does it pencil and pay? I think that was maybe the what they're trying to think about. But yeah, I mean, when you think when you think about it, you know, if you've got a number of drivers, you're paying your hourly wages too. So just having them there, even if they're not making deliveries, it's costing money to the dealership. Now, in this case, there is no cost for it to just sit there or to have that solution, and you're only paying that delivery portion, uh, period. Again, there's no insurance. There's, you're not paying for a vehicle or, or to, to take care of the vehicle that they're going to be using, et cetera, or those hourly wages. It's just that small delivery fee. And on average, for our customers, we're actually able to get that delivery to that customer inside of 55 minutes. So what may have taken four six hours or not not right now we'll wait a day because uh, you know the, the drivers are out and busy um now we're able to fulfill those orders move things a lot quicker and even in the service lane we're starting to see this have an impact where you know you know if i'm a dealership i'm a ford store and i have a guy that bought a used honda from me and he wants to service it but i don't have the part instead of having to wait days to get that part i know i have this other sister store that you know has it I can send that delivery driver and bring it to me in less than an hour. And we're getting that fulfilled through the service lane. The service bays are answering fast or being able to fill with new things. And we're getting higher customer satisfaction reviews for those customers as well. I think it's important, Bar, just to mention like the local delivery is just like an enhancement we did to our already existing services. So we still integrate with uh, UPS and I think FedEx and like your standard delivery. So like when people buy parts, like if they want to do the standard delivery options, you know, where it gets boxed up and it's there in two to three to five days, you know, depending on like, you know, the shipping time, uh, they can do that. But if it's a, you know, an instance where they want the part now, like 30 minutes, <laughs> hot, fresh, fast parts, <laughs> like, you know, that's something, you know, unique that we offer and uh, it allows you to compete a lot more too on, you know, with the aftermarket because some of the aftermarket stores will do part deliveries for small guys. Mm -hmm. So it's just a new opportunity. And it's something we're investing in and improving too. Uh, we just rolled that out this year. Uh, I'm not gonna give you like any sneak peeks, but I can tell you in probably a year from now, there's gonna be additional functionality and features that are included with that local delivery that make it even more enticing. I've got, I've got one more question that came in, and then I've got a, a final a final one I'd like you guys to answer. Um, and what like one of the slides? Let me see if I can. One of the slides you mentioned that that I should invest online. What do what do you mean invest online? Um, what's you know what are some of the best dealers doing to to optimize their online presence to drive traffic to their to their web stores? I'll let the marketing man answer that one. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, first invest online. First, you need to have a, a digital presence online. So from a parts perspective, you, you need to get rid of the parts form and you need to have your inventory online. So just having it there uh, makes it so people can find you. But by invest, what I mean is, uh, so there's a couple things. You can do like paid search campaigns where you're actually advertising your parts. So uh, lots of dealers, what they'll do is they'll, uh, a lot of times they won't do nationwide. Some will do nation, some will just do like a radius, you know, of touching states and they'll advertise their, uh, their parts store or they'll do specific parts terms in touching states. And if people search for parts, then their listings pop up and they're able to navigate to that dealer store and buy the part online. Uh, they could do promotions and things like that through Amazon and eBay. You can also invest in SEO where you're optimizing for search terms. I don't want to get too technical on the marketing side, but you can do uh, SEO, which basically means uh, when people search organically, uh, your search results pop up and you're not paying per se for those search results, uh, just the investment of time. Uh, we have a lot of... Uh, out the box stuff i think from like an seo perspective that comes in we also do like from a marketing perspective like a lot of your i don't know if this is gonna get lost on the audience or not but like card abandonment uh like stuff so like our platform for example like if you go in and start to purchase a part uh but you don't finish the per the per uh, purchase you can do like automated email messages and like 
you can try to like recapture that business through emails and we can like automate a lot of that stuff. You can do sales uh, in your store. There's like a featured part area that a lot of people will leverage. Uh, so you can look at like what's trending. And a lot of times we can do reports on like what are the most popular parts or what are the most popular accessories uh, by times of year. And we can help, you know, build out marketing campaigns to drive like email messages to those parts, those people and try to push those parts. So say uh, you're a Honda dealer and you want to do a campaign on accessories to everyone that's purchased a, you know, a Honda Civic that's model year, you know, 2005 through 2012, because they all have the same accessories. You could build a campaign out to push, uh, you know, an email to those people touting the most popular accessories or something along those lines. So that's what I mean by invest is just think of, you know, ways that you can drive traffic to your store, whether it is through marketing to your existing customers, getting net new customers by investing in search and paid, or uh, through other means like card abandonment and stuff like that. And the other thing that's really important too, I'll, I could run on about marketing stuff, <laughs> it is just like the experience of the store. So there's, I mean, we're not the only company in the world that obviously uh, sells, helps dealers sell parts online, but we're the most successful like our customer conversion rates like meaning like when a customer like starts a purchase are exponentially i won't throw a number out there but they're a lot higher like the closest competitor is probably done half the revenue that we've done uh and they have probably uh almost the same amount of customers same amount of traffic but their process like the flow the purchase flow for the consumer is so disjointed uh, we have a very smooth purchase flow. Uh, the other cool thing about our platform, like this local delivery I mentioned, uh, gets pushed out to everyone. Our platform, like our features, anytime we do a feature enhancement, so like if Mercedes-Benz comes to us and says, hey, we really want to have this platform, uh, we're not, we not only build that feature for Mercedes-Benz, but we give that feature to every customer. And we don't, you know, we don't come back and say, oh, well, to do returns, uh, now it's going to cost you, you know, $1,000 more. Like, we push that feature down. So when feature requests come in, uh, you get the feature that we create for the other person. So you get the benefit, you know, the the many get the benefit of the one or the one get the benefit of the many. many I don't know how <laughs> the rest, yeah, but you, you guys get what I'm saying. And it, we're, our goal is really just to make it as easy as possible for dealers to sell parts online well this leads me to my last question and you guys can tape table it and i appreciate everyone uh for joining us the, the last question and we talked about this maybe it was last week when, when you when you and i chatted a little bit i think you were on the call mike is you've got dealers that are just you know writing a check and you know they're not canceling so that's good and then you've got dealers that are crushing it um, what are a few of the things that separate those two camps? Yeah, I, it's a little bit about what we talked about just a second ago is really like investing like the it's work like there's some work at the end of the day. So like if you come and you just sign up with us, uh, you're not going to you'll sell some parts, but you're not going to be super successful. You need to like, you know, listen to the recommendations that we make. Uh, in terms of like pricing on different channels and getting your parts in the right place in front of the right buyers, uh, just just investing the time like we'll guide you through it and help you along the way. And we have people that can do it for you, too. Like I said, we have a whole marketing group that's running a 10 to 1 return on ad spend right now. So <laughs> it's a pretty good investment to get a 10 to 1 return on ad, ad spend. And so as someone that's been in marketing for 10 years, I've. 10 plus years now, with about 50. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the, the marketing group we have here is one of the most successful I've ever seen, especially right now during this COVID period to see 10 to one return on ad spend. That's unheard of. But it's just about making the investment. It's with anything. Like you can't expect to buy something and to not put the work into it and see, you know, any type of return off of it. So the guys that put the work into selling parts, sell parts. Like, the market's there, the demand's there, so you just got to put the work in. I'll let Matt add to that. 
Well, I mean, the first thing I'd say too is historically parts people, you know, countermen aren't trained as salespeople aren't having to necessarily act like that. A lot of the times they've been answering questions. So now we're changing the makeup of the, of the parts department to where it's a true selling, a selling department, a true selling system. Um, you know, in, in terms of making it easier to, to spend more time just fulfilling orders versus answering questions. Um, and like you said, you know, the thing that separates the guys that may have signed up uh, for the wrong reasons and, and not be successful versus everybody else. Um, are you taking our recommendations? Are you, do you understand the fact that margins are different online versus uh, straight in your dealership, right? The guys that go and try to sell for full retail pop on Amazon or eBay aren't going to see things flock to shelves at all versus the guys that, you know, we can help with the shipping costs or, you know, setting up the, the, the margins and the pricing to, to help them make their portion but get themselves those sales. Um, shipping brings up another portion that helps separate guys. Um, you know, you, you hear all the time in dealerships about shipping expense accounts. Um, I, I hear a lot from our customers where they, they no longer are shipping expense accounts, they're shipping profit accounts because we've got an integrated solution which is actually allowing our dealerships to make money just on the cost of shipping. You know, I, had a, I have a dealership that, I, that I've talked to that averages north of $3,000 a month just purely in shipping profits uh, because of how we're able to help them there. Um, you know, I mean, our partnership is, is, is key to us and being able to give those kind of recommendations to help you, be, you know, get on the right foot, stay on the right foot. I mean, I've worked with other companies before. I've never seen a situation where, you know, we hold your hand after you go live um, to help you be successful. We're not just, okay, we're giving you a solution. Here you go. Feed you to the world and see what happens. No, regular check-ins, uh, setting up calls, 99% uptime, just kind of unheard of things in the industry that we're trying to do to, you know, really do our part to put the value in the partnership and to give you those items and give you those things to help you be successful. Well, like every solution, Bart, we can lead a horse to water, but we can't make anybody drink. Right. Well, guys, thank you so much. There's a lot here. Uh, once again, for everybody that, uh, that, that registered, we will send this recording out so you'll be able to, to maybe slow it down a little bit um, and, 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 and find some, some nuggets of gold in there. In addition, it will be posted on the community. Uh, Mike, Matt, thanks so much. We appreciate you joining us and um, yeah, for all the insight you provided. Hey, I appreciate thank it, Bart, and uh, thank everyone for uh, joining the webinar. And we hope to see everyone on future driving sales webinars. We do these frequently and once again, we're just trying to, to uh, share as much knowledge as we can, and, and we appreciate partners like Revolution Parts that can come in and help us with that. So thanks, everyone, and we'll see you soon.